in the back room now of uh, Swalco. We're here with Steve. He's a chemical waste engineer for Swalco. Correct. Well, first of all, this is our household chemical waste facility. Um, there's only four in the state of Illinois. Wow. Uh, we built this facility, started construction in 01, uh, took occupancy in 02. It's 8,000 square foot off uh, facility, 3,500 is our office building up front with 4,500 square foot as our chemical warehouse facility. What we do in this facility, our, the chemical warehouse, we run our, uh, we call them public drop-off events where we'll collect household cleaners from residents around the area um, and we recycle it. We keep that material, the hazardous materials out of the landfills, out of the sanitary systems. Yeah. So we run uh, multiple events a year here. We do 23 events a year at this facility. Uh, it's always the second Saturday, fourth Monday of every month. We spent $2 million on the facility and a, a large part of that is due to the safety features that we need in this facility because of the type of materials that we, that we handle all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we have safety sh showers located throughout the facility in case somebody gets splashed. Um, we also have a ventilation system that exchanges six air changes an hour, so air is coming in, air is being pulled out at the same time so we don't get vapor accumulation in the facility. Um, we have a uh, smoke beam detector that basically shoots a laser beam across the two corners of this room here that if it detects any type of uh, smoke particulates, it'll uh, alarm the security system and they'll call me and say you got Very good. It. All right. And in addition to that, we have a high expansion foam system. Um, if we ever, ever have a, f a problem with a fire, we don't have Some of the chemicals accidentally get mixed together and <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, something happens and we have ignition for some reason. Um, this is not sprinklered like a regular warehouse office facility. We have high expansion foam, foam systems and that's that red box up on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It will fill a warehouse up in 10 feet of foam in three minutes time, snuff out the fire. Wow. Very so good. That was, uh, we good spent a lot. Yes, so very, very safe process. Um, uh, very, very well designed facility. So, when we bring the material into this room here, um, I have a series of environmentally trained subcontractors from Veolia, mm -hmm. uh, hazardous waste oh. people that are trained in OSHA, DOT, hazardous materials training. We look at the material and we segregate it into hazard classes. We have to figure out. Is it a flammable? Is it corrosive? Is it an oxidizer, reactive? Is it a poison? And based on that, we have to package it uh, appropriately according to the DOT regulations. So this is the room. We call it our segregation room. So when the folks come in, we'll, we'll take our carts, we'll unload the material from the car, bring it in here. That cart will be filled of, full of various types of containers. And I've got some of them up on on the stands for display here. Uh, some other waste streams that we uh, collect are oil-based paints. Um, we collect these because they're flammable. They have a solvent base in them. So we want all the oil-based paints that you have, the stains, the lacquers, the thinners, um, and what we'll do with those, we'll put them into this box. We'll fill up this box and then during, um, uh, during the course of the week, uh, we'll actually process those cans into a paint can crusher I'll show you later where we extract the liquid paint out and, and put that into a 55 gallon drum and then the carcass itself is crushed and then that goes to the landfill. So this box here, any oil based paint that comes in we'll put into here and we'll process at a future time. If you ever want a side job, come on over I've got a job for you. Um, I'm talking about the, the paints that we generate that we collect and we package into those Gaylord boxes and in individual cans. During the course of the week, we bring in a technician and they take those individual cans, put them into this can crusher, and what it does is uh, uh, it'll, it'll crush the can. So you put the can in here, you close the door, the ram comes down, the pin comes up, smashes a hole in the can, the liquid product goes off into a 55 gallon drum, and then the carcass is kicked out into a, a dumpster and the carcass gets landfilled. But, uh, We've, we've processed millions of cans of paint, so again, the offer is open if you want. <laughs> Glad to hear that, <laughs> thank use, you. <laughs> use the help. So. Any antifreeze that we get uh, from the auto mechanics, no, I shouldn't say auto mechanics, from, from the uh, homeowners, we'll go ahead and we'll pour off the antifreeze into a 55 gallon drum. This is just a collection basin, you'll take the container, pour it off, it drains into a 55 gallon drum. We have a float assembly to tell when we're filling up the drum to capacity so that we don't overflow a drum. Um, and what do they do with it then? Is it get reused or? Yes, reused? this is a recycled product, so it gets sent out to a, a, a blender, and they go ahead and they filter it, and then uh, strengthen it, and then sell it back out to the marketplace. Great to hear. Okay.
Another product that we uh, pour out of the containers is flammable liquids. Uh, we're talking about safety features. Uh, because we have flammable product around here, we have to put grounding straps and bonding straps to the, to the container. We'll take, a, we have a lot of boat owners here in Lake County. They want to get rid of their gas at the end of this season. We'll take their container, we'll pour it off into a 55 gallon drum, give them their container back if they wish. Uh, but that's the same, same process, we'll pour it off into here, goes into a 55 gallon drum, drum fills up, tells it we're full, we're full. we top it, we uh, secure the lid, Sh this is shipped out again for fuels blending similar to some of the other products that we have. We have ventilation hoods here that are pulling air across the, uh, the work area. So as you're pouring material, you're not getting vapor accumulation, so there's no need for respiratory protection when you do so. And motor oil, this is what we pour off motor oil into this basin. Again, it's got a fume hood in front of it. For vapor accumulation, the motor oil drains off into this basin. Uh, there's a discharge pipe that feeds out to an outside storage tank, um, a thousand gallon waste oil storage tank. Again, this is uh, emptied out on a routine basis and we send that out for recycling. So at the end of the day when we're done with our last car and we've, we've packaged everything up, we bring it over to this, this side of the facility. This is called our storage room. Um, all the product here is uh, put in appropriate drums. It's labeled, it's ready for off-site shipment. Uh, we have capacity here for about 350 gallon, 55 gallon drums. Uh, we have a storage permit. Uh, we can't exceed 90 days. Uh, we also have the capacity agreement. So um, during our busy months, we're shipping waste out of here every, every 30 days. Uh, very, very busy process. So. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for the tour and the information about Swackle, what you guys do here.